Hey guys, in this video I want to do a build overview of the Lantian LT 215mm frame and uh, this is a 5 inch X style frame with a low profile battery uh, back end. I wanted to build a, a 5 inch copter that could run on 4S and this is uh, one of the first uh, 4S builds that I've ever done. So I'm going to go over all of the components I've put into it and uh, give you some tips as to how to build this frame. I did do a sort of a frame review of this particular frame if you want to see it built without the electronics in it on another video earlier on my channel and I'll put a link up here on the screen so you guys could take a look at that if you want to see this, uh, the frame built in a little more detail. Um, I'm just going to go over uh, the steps that I went through to build this particular model and uh, there are going to be a bunch of still photos uh, as I went along the build process uh, as to what uh, got put in and where. And I'll, I'll talk about all that in this video. Uh, so first I take the uh, top plates off and I just basically have the, the main bottom plate with the arms exposed uh, and I leave the standoffs in here. I'm using the uh, B-Rotor uh, PDB and uh, the B-Rotor F3 all-in-one flight controller. So uh, th these two things together uh, will give me battery voltage and also my uh, current draw on uh, on my battery. And uh, these go together. There's a special cable that goes in between the two. And this particular flight controller comes with a built-in OSD, which is um, something that uh, makes this build a lot easier because the space uh, inside um, the lower pro uh, profile portion uh, below the battery here is very, very tight. It's only about... Uh, 18 millimeters from the uh, main plate to the top plate where the battery sits. So there's not a lot of space to put your components in. So the first thing I did after mounting the PDB was uh, installing my ESCs. These are the Racer Star 30 amp ESCs. Uh, these are pretty new on the market. They're, they're Sunrise Cicada clones and they run the new uh, BL Heli S. Uh, so uh, they do the hardware PWM, uh, very smooth throttle response. I did another i uh, talk about this in another video and I'll put that up on the screen as well if you want to take a look at that. So after uh, mounting my ESCs, I went ahead and mounted my motors. These are the AOK Fly uh, 2205, 2300 KV motors. Uh, they're very, very smooth sounding. Um, again, I did another video on this one as well on my channel and I'll put a link up on the screen here for you guys to take a look at that one if you want more details on this motor. It's uh, sort of a competitor to the Emax uh, Red Bottoms, the 2205s, 2300 KVs. And uh, uh, I've flown this already. They, they sound very smooth, very, um, very responsive in the air, and a lot of power. Here's a, a close-up of the motor and the ESCs, and uh, check out that great soldering job. Look, it's really shiny. So in this photo here, I got the rest of my electronics installed. In the back, I've got the Hawkeye um, Q300 video transmitter, and uh, the flight controller is there buried underneath the Free Sky. X4R SV receiver. I, I was going to originally use the XSR receiver, but um, in the middle of the build, I decided to uh, change. I changed my mind in the middle of the build because I wanted to use the XSR in a different build, something something smaller. And the uh, this particular X4R SV was deep pinned, and all I had to just put some heat shrink on it, and it fits just fine in there, and just fits perfectly between the flight controller and the the, the plate for the battery. Also, I was going to use the Runcam swift camera for my fpv camera uh but at the last minute actually actually while i was building this my run cam eagle sample came in and um i decided to put that camera in here instead of the swift i will probably take the eagle out of here at some point and put the swift back in um, but just letting you know that uh, that's uh, why the eagle's in there now instead of the swift which i originally intended here's a closer view of the uh, backside of electronics here as you can see, there's very, very little space between uh, the main plate and the plate where the battery sits. That's one of these. That's sort of the, the pros and cons of these low-profile um, copters. Now I've got the uh, video transmitter zip tied to the bottom plate, and I still have access to my LED light and the button to change channels. Uh, I have a bunch of connectors on the other zip tie that actually hold the receiver and all of these um, servo wire connectors together. Uh, in retrospect, I probably should have direct soldered all of these things because uh, the space is so tight. Uh, but 
after fiddling with this for a little while, um, I did manage to get everything to fit in here and it, it, it works all just fine. So overall, basically, because of the low profile uh, backside where the battery sits, um, the uh, putting all the electronics into the back there is a little bit tricky. Uh, it does require uh, some planning and thought as to how you want to uh, wire stuff and solder stuff. And uh, if you have some questions about how I did that, please let me know in the comments below. Um, it's not really that hard, it just takes a little bit of experience to sort of figure out, okay, they'll, you know, this connector is going to go here and, and the wire is going to be this long. So you just have to sort of plan how long your wires have to be to where you want to solder stuff. And, um, and also test fit stuff too, just before you actually close everything up. Because uh, if you don't do that, then you're going to have uh, maybe too long of wires and too much stuff sitting around. And then it's going to take up extra space and prevent you from uh, being able to screw down that top lid and uh, and sometimes those wires can come out and you get a prop strike and then all of a sudden you lose video because you're uh, the, the prop happened to cut the cable that was connecting your video transmitter so things like that can happen if you're not uh, thoughtful as to how to manage your uh, wires and cabling and connections inside the electronics bay other than that, this was a pretty straightforward build, you know, uh, it's got the same components that you have in all the other copters out there. Video transmitter, FUV camera, flight controller, PDB, etc, etc. Uh, this is my first build uh, with uh, 4S capabilities. All my other PDBs and other ESDs um, aren't really rated for 4S, and so I wasn't really comfortable flying 4S on some of the other builds I've done on my channel. And this is uh, the first sort of true five inch copter that I've built. Uh, I, ha I have built the ZMR250, but that's more of a, a larger, like a, you know, almost a six inch copter. And I'm not really uh, designed for the racing that a lot of the five inch copters are. So this will be a lot of fun. I I've already flown this and uh, I can already tell you that the these motors and ESCs are fantastic. They fly extremely well, very smooth, the throttle response is excellent. Um, the power is insane. I, I've never flown 4S before until now, and uh, it's uh, really eye-opening as to why I waited so long to fly 4S. So um, yeah, you know, uh, just watch the video and, and listen to the sound of the motors. It, it's, uh, you'll, 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 it, you'll notice a big difference between the uh, previous copters I've built on you know, the smaller frames and such that they just sound very anemic compared to this one. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and roll some flight footage for you. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.